All right, so here's our second example of finding volume. We're going to set this up as a double integral. Um, this is going to be one that works better in, in polar coordinates, which you, you might guess, you know, anytime you see the x squared plus y squared, that's probably a clue that polar coordinates might be useful because we know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared in polar. Um, let's, uh, let's sketch this out. One of the things that's difficult with this particular example, and we'll see this in a second, um, it's not immediately clear what volume is being bounded by these two surfaces. So the first thing we'd better do is draw the surfaces. So we have some idea of what we're dealing with. So let me draw the cone first. Okay, so here is our cone. Uh, looks something like this. Okay, so it's a circular cone. Goes down like that. Down like that. And it's circular on the bottom as well. Okay. Something like that. There's our cone. Okay. What about this cylinder? Well, first of all, Let's complete the square on this thing. What do we actually have here? What we actually have is, is x squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 1. Okay, so that's the equation of a circle, but it's a circle that's been shifted one unit along the y-axis. So we have this circle here. Okay, and that circle is going to extend up okay, and down like so, okay, up, so it's a cylinder. Okay. okay, so there's our cylinder. All right, now comes the hard part. We need, we need the, we, if we want to calculate a volume, we need a bounded region. So what region is actually bounded here, right? Well, it's not going to be something that, let's say, is, is inside the cone but outside the cylinder um, because whatever that is, it, it goes off forever that way. It goes off forever that way, right? Um, what we could do, though, is we could look at, well, something which is inside the cylinder but outside the cone. That is actually something that we can make sense of. Um, the cylinder intersects the cone. You can actually sort of figure this out, right? Um, what is the, uh, this is actually a good thing to, to think about. What is the intersection of the cylinder and the cone? Um, so there's, there's a few things you can kind of do. You can play around with this. Uh, but one of the things you might notice is that here you have x squared plus y squared. Here you have x squared plus y squared. Um, so one of the things we can notice is that along the intersection, we're going to have to have z squared equals 2y, right? Because any, any point that satisfies both, or you know, any point that lies on both surfaces has to satisfy both equations. So if x squared plus y squared equals z squared, it also has to equal 2y. All right, um, so z squared equals 2y, what is that? Uh, well, that's a parabola. It's a parabola in the yz plane, all right? So that's a parabola that looks something like this. Okay, and now you can start to see what the, what the solid that you're trying to, to find the volume of what it looks like. Let me grab a cloth. If we, if we erase this bit of the cone, well now you can kind of, you can kind of see it. The, so the solid that we're trying to, to calculate here, it's this, it's this bit of cylinder, right? Um, so it's this part of the cylinder, which is in here to there, okay? And, and so, so basically there's, you know, 
it is kind of a bit on the other side. It's hard to draw, I guess. Um, yeah, well, in fact, let's just go with this. Um, you can kind of get an idea. So it's this, it's this wedge cut out here that we're trying to, that we're trying to find the volume of. Um, drawing it, maybe not so easy, but we can kind of play with the equations and figure out what we have to do. Yeah. If you wanted to get kind of a better idea, we might have to think about, you know, setting these equations up in different ways, figuring things out. Um, so I guess if we, one of the things that we might want to do if we wanted to kind of get a more detailed picture of what's going on in the intersection, if we wanted kind of the picture in, let's say, the yz plane is, well, we should probably just solve maybe, maybe for not for x squared plus y squared, but actually just for, for x squared. Um, well, let's see what happens if we do that. Um, in the first equation, x squared would have to be, I, you know, I don't think it actually is going to get us any, any further along. z squared minus y squared. And then I also know that x squared has to be, um, to y minus y squared. Well, actually, you can see what happens if you, if you equate the x squared. You're still going to get there. Um, OK. But in fact, all that really tells you is, is that tells you what the intersection looks like if you project it onto the yz plane, right? If you kind of throw away x, uh, the intersection looks like that. Uh, it doesn't, that doesn't give you the, the entire picture for what the curve of intersection looks like. Um, this is something that we're going to have to deal with at some point in the course, but maybe we don't deal with it just now. Um, what do these curves of intersections actually look like? Uh, probably the right way to look at them is, is to look at them as parametric curves. Um, and we'll be dealing with parametric curves again once we get to line integrals in the next chapter. Okay, so I think, I think we can at least kind of see what we're doing here. So in the xy plane, we have this region D. And D is the region whose boundary is given by this equation here, right? So it's this circle. Okay. Um, if I were going to draw it in the xy plane, then this is x, this is y. And my circle is here. Okay. And then, so now we got to think about, all right, so what points are in the region? Well, we, we take any point on or inside this disk. So we choose a point and we go up. We go up until we hit the cone, right? Or we go down until we hit the cone. Okay. So so basically, our region overall that we're trying to find the volume of, if we were trying to write down um, bounds for the region, we can see that we're going to have, well, the bottom half of the cone, which is going to be minus square root x squared plus y squared, less than or equal to z, less than or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Where, um, well, what can we say about x and y here? Um, well, we have this circle. Now, here's the, here's the thing. That circle can be described in, in rectangular coordinates. I guess if I was going to do it in rectangular coordinates, I might kind of say, well, x is going to run. I would probably solve for x here. I'd say, well, x is going to go between minus the square root of 2y minus y squared to plus the square root of 2y minus y squared. And then y, well, we can see from here that y is going from 0 up to 2, right? OK. Because we have a circle of, you know, the center is at, this is 0, 1. So that is 0, 2, because our circle has radius 1. All right. Those are maybe not the equations that we want to work with, right? We could. We could set up this volume. We could set it up. We could say, all right, so the volume is it's this triple integral. Why not? You know, we're, we're, we're on our way to triple integrals. That's right, it is a triple integral. So we'd say 0. So y goes from 0 to 2. x goes from minus square root 2y minus y squared to plus square root 
2y minus y squared. Z goes from minus the square root of x squared plus y squared to plus the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then we're doing z, then we're doing x, then we're doing y, right? So there's the triple integral that computes our volume. Integrating over z, we just have to do upper limit minus lower limit. And then we get it down to a double integral. OK. So we get the square root minus, minus the same square root. So we're just adding the two together. And we get down to there. All right. That looks an awful lot like something that you want to be doing in polar coordinates, right? Um, there's your r, your polar r, sitting right there. Um, if you didn't switch to polar, you're going to have to work deal with antiderivatives of this thing. That's going to involve trig substitutions. It's going to be pretty unpleasant to kind of continue on from there. Even having done the trig substitutions, well, then you're still going to be plugging in these limits. That's going to make things probably even more awful. So yeah, better convert to polar. So what do these things look like in polar? Um, and by the way, um, the polar coordinates are going to deal with the x and y variables. If we also kind of include z, then what we're dealing with is, in fact, one of the two extensions of polar coordinates into 3D, which is the cylindrical coordinate system. We'll be talking about that in a later video. Um, <coughs> so what does this look like in polar coordinates? This is saying that r squared is 2r sine theta, right? y is equal to r sine theta. Um, and we can cancel an r. So this, um, this circle is r is equal to 2 sine theta. And what range of theta are we dealing with? Well, it's first quadrant to second quadrant. That's theta going from 0 to pi. OK. And well, r equals 2 sine theta, that's the, that's the boundary of the region. But you can see that for any angle between 0 and pi, if you choose an angle and you start at the origin and you go out, right, r starts at 0, and it increases until you hit the 2 sine theta. So that means that r is, in fact, between 0 and 2 sine theta. OK? Um, if you wanted to, notice that, that these bounds on z just say that z is between minus r and r. So without explicitly saying so, we've kind of done a, a cylindrical coordinate transformation here, right? Without even introducing what cylindrical coordinates are, we're already using them. So that means that what I could have done here is, is I could replace this dx dy by r dr d theta, replace that by r that by r. And then over here, well, now we go not from 0 to 2. We're going to go from 0 to pi. That's going to become a 0. That's going to become a 2 sine theta. Okay. That's what the integral would look like, the triple integral and cylindrical coordinates. It would look like that. Um, so let's write the corresponding polar integral. It's going to look like this. Theta goes from 0 to pi. r goes from 0 to 2 sine theta. And we have 2r, r coming from here. Then we have another r, right? So we actually have 2r squared, dr d theta. OK? So from 0 to pi, we're going to have 2 thirds r cubed. We're evaluating that from 0 to 2 sine theta. Then we have to do the theta integral. So 0 to pi. Um, cubing that, I'm going to get 8 times 2, so 16 over 3 sine cubed theta d theta. Now we, we've got it down to just a regular one variable definite integral. 
um, that you can solve using Calc 2 techniques. Uh, I think we'll leave it at this because the video is already long enough. Uh, of course, remember that what you can do with this is you, uh, you peel off one sine theta, the sine squared that's left, write it as 1 minus cos squared, do a U substitution, and you'll, uh, you'll have her done. Okay. Um, so we'll leave it at that. In the next video, we're going to introduce um, triple integrals a little bit more formally, and we'll look at a few more examples.